A warm welcome to Disky Talk with Leo Lum. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I ask that you please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you've been a part of the journey, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this episode. So, on today's episode, we discuss all things DSTV Premiership fixtures. So, on today's episode, I will do a tactical preview of two upcoming fixtures. So, that is Mamelodi Sundowns versus TS Galaxy and Swallows versus Super Sport United. I will start with Mamelodi Sundowns versus TS Galaxy. So, coming into this one then, um, it is then quite an interesting encounter and uh, one that I'm looking forward to because, um, like I have mentioned in the past, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoy um, the relationship between a ball-playing side and a side which loves to institute a low to mid-block approach to game. So, sort of, um, you know, can you guys break us down? We're going to set up with our two banks of four and five and have one striker and can you guys break us can you guys break us down you know that's that's always a very interesting encounter you know seeing if um the team with um all the um, quality ball players and the superstars from a qualitative perspective can break down the solid low block you know so going to be a very interesting encounter so with this one uh, the blue team will represent Mamelodi Sundowns and the red team will represent TS Galaxy. And um, coming into this one then, Mamelodi Sundowns did pick up three points against Kaiser Chiefs. Wasn't a great performance, in my perspective, against Kaiser Chiefs when it comes to their normal way of instituting their style of play with regards to them dominating in midfield. You know, in fact, if anything in that game, they conceded the ball possession, which is actually surprising because Mamelodi Sundowns normally have the lion's share of the ball. But coming into this one then, when we have a look at um, this encounter, so... Um, Mamelodi Sundowns, uh, they go with the 3-4-3. So I would assume that um, they'll go with um, the same lineup unchanged because I just, I think, A, that is their strongest lineup with what they have. And um, also, I don't see anybody really breaking into the solid starting 11. So when we, when we then look at the starting 11, you know, uh, except for um, Nascimento when he's fully, I think, you know, he can... He'll come in, you know, but it's, 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 it's an interesting conversation because Grand Kekan has been very solid. So when we have a look at Sundowns, then the back three, um, you've got uh, Rushin Duruk starting as a left-sided centre-half. You've got uh, Rivaldo Kutsia who drops in as the libero or as the deep-laying deep playmaker at times, you know, which is uh, actually a uh, very, very... Uh, transitional type of player, you know, when uh, Sundowns are depend defending deep in their own half, you will see him drop, which institutes a back three. Whenever they do have ball possession, he then will add the numerical advantage into midfield in consolidation phase and look to get onto the ball and dictate terms from deep is the deep laying playmaker. And then the right side at center off, Grant Kekana, like I mentioned, he's done so well, you know. He's got a couple of clean sheets. He's also got a goal to his name. And he's growing in confidence in this Sundowns uh, starting 11. He's doing really well at the moment, you know. And then in midfield, uh, Jali and um, Zwane, which, like I've always mentioned, I prefer Temba Zwane starting from deep and playing as a 10 and then creating for a front three as opposed to him starting in a front three and then creating for a two. So it's better when Zwane starts there because he's able to di dictate terms from a lot deeper, especially considering how Sundowns have been doing as of late. You know, they've struggled to dominate proceedings in the midfield and they've struggled to rotate the ball in vertical zone two, three, and four with ease like they normally do. So very important that, that they start with Zwane in midfield and Jali as well. Players who are able to get onto the ball and dictate terms from a qualitative perspective deep in their own um, deep deep in their own um, deep in their own half where they're able to start and build up play and then progress playing here. Yeah? 
then also very important that they're very comfortable in these spaces. You know, and Sundowns haven't had that. And that's why they've struggled in this area because teams are now starting to nullify them. But if teams nullify you, you should always then be able to come up with the goods to say, okay, shop, we've been nullified from this perspective, but how do you work around that to institute our free-flowing passing game, you know? And with Azwane, I think he answers that. He answers that. And uh, Jali as well in there. Lila K continues as the left wing back. Tapelo Murena continues. And then the front three of um, Shalulile, Erasmus, and um, Serino as well. But worth mentioning, um, Neo Mayem came off the bench against uh, Keza Chiefs and had a great game. You know, he even assisted that goal. So he also showed us his versatility and the duality that comes with him because he's normally a player who loves to institute his dominance and style of play in the half spaces. But he was then able to go to the bar line and deliver such a beautiful cross, you know, from, um, from a vertical zone four, you know. So... That was very surprising, you know, because he is a player who normally op operates in the half space and deeper in vertical zone four, as opposed to going to the bar line in vertical zone four and vertical zone five. But he went there and delivered a beautiful cross for Shalulile. So worth mentioning that he might get a look in, especially considering that Erasmus hasn't really played um, really well, in my opinion. And uh, Kutumela as well, another who came off the bench and also had a good cameo against Kaiser Chiefs. The previous game to that had a good cameo against uh, Golden Arrows in the MTN8 semi-final first leg, where he had a, a beautiful cross first post and had the assist. So those are two players who could actually come in for an Erasmus and actually look to play then in those pockets of spaces, you know. So very interesting then to see who will then start. But I think it should be that lineup where you've got Erasmus, Shalulile, and Serino as the three up front, where Erasmus and Serino play as the two number 10s, Zwane coming from deep. I think that's Sundown's strongest 11. Going then into TS Galaxy. So in goals, they start with Kolak. Um, and um, they go with uh, a... Look, it's a hybrid system, you know. So I would say they go with um, a 4-3, a 4-3-2-1. At times, um, it looks like um, a 4-5-1. So we'll stick to it being a 4-2-3-1 in a sense, you know. And at times then becoming a 4-5-1 whenever... Um, Brooks would drop in, you know, instead of him being the... So to illustrate, instead of him being the one in the three, he'd sometimes drop into that midfield. Then there'd be three of them. Then it becomes a 4-5-1 whenever they don't have the ball and they're looking to, to defend, you know. At times, like I mentioned, it can also be um, sort of a 4-3-2-1 where it becomes narrow, where you'll have Mbata and Nyama coming in a lot more closer to Matupu, but they also go wide as well. So, yeah, it's a variation. But we'll go with a 4-2-3-1, which transitions into a 4-5-1 for the sake of, um, uh, of tactical balance and tactical understanding. So when we have a look at the back four, then we've got Lucky Boy Mukwe now starts as the right back. Your two center halves, you've got Makitan, and uh, you've got Macbeth Mahlangu, and then you've got Ibrahim Sidat. But um, Sinoka could come back in into that back four, just to mention, you know. And um, yeah, with regards to this back four, then the two full backs, very comfortable on the ball, love getting forward, and very good at delivering those crosses as well, you know, which um, is something they could look to expose Mamelodi Sundowns, especially in this channel. And that channel. Like I've mentioned, sometimes when you play with the back three or a hybrid of a back three, you know, um, you do suffer when it comes to these channels, you know, if the two wing backs don't react quick enough or if the full, if the um, uh, left side and right side at center halves don't react quick enough with regards to engaging this channel. And you don't want your center backs going into those channels. They're not so comfortable in those full back channels. They prefer to be a lot more tucked in in vertical zone um, 
two and four where they are most comfortable, where center backs are most comfortable in vertical zone two and four. And then when you really want to go central, then in vertical zone three, that's where center backs are most comfortable at. But yeah, when you then look at this TS Galaxy side, Lucky Boy Mkwena is the right-sided um, fullback. Left-sided fullback Ibrahim Sedat, one of my favorite left-sided fullbacks, you know, within the DSTV Premiership quality. And then in midfield, they do go with Umbunjane, Obas, and then Brooks, you know, who starts, I won't say he's the number 10, but he's more of a number 8 who's tasked with creative duties when it comes to creating for this front three. And then off the right, you've got Bata. Off the left, you've got Nyama, but they do interchange. And then you've got Matupu as uh, the main man up front. So that is um, actually uh, quite a strong lineup for TS Galaxy, you know. I just wish that they played more on the front foot as opposed to coming into the games and um, trying to be pragmatic and trying to nullify the opposition. Because when you look at those players, I think if they were to impose themselves on opposition, I think they could actually play and go out there and... Um, Play some, play some good football and actually score goals, you know. But coming into this counter, I think Owen Dagama will be looking to catch them on the break. We'll be looking to catch them on the counter. So we will see um, TS Galaxy operating with more of a 4-5-1 in, in this encounter where Brooks drops into midfield. And um, that will be more or less the regular shape where Sundown then will look to... Um, Obviously, overload um, vertical zone three and have that numerical advantage in there, you know, where Rivaldo Cotillo will join. And then in here, it sort of um, becomes um, a numerical advantage where they have five versus three in there. And uh, if you, Matupu at times will have to find himself dropping in, but it's still a numerical advantage because it becomes a five versus four in there. So this is more or less the general shape of the game. And um, I don't think it's going to be an easy game for Sundowns, you know, as uh, I actually foresee, I'll give you my prediction and substantiate why I think it's going to be the way it's going to be. So I think this game will be a draw. I think it's going to be um, either 1-1 one, one or 0-0. Nil, nil. And the reason why I think so is because Sundowns, are struggling to break down a team which institutes a low block and uh, struggling to play against a side which um, sets up with uh, a bank of four and a bank of five. So when they are tucked in, a bank of four and five, Sundowns are struggling to break that down, you know, as of late, you know. They play better when a team is much more open. Against Kaiser Chiefs, um, the goal they got, they got one from a set piece and then the other goal came from... Neo Miami. It came from a throw-in where Kaiser Chiefs was a bit disorientated at the back and they weren't organized. And then their other goal in the DSTV Premiership um, came by virtue of a penalty from Zwane. So in DSTV Premiership football, they've only scored one from open play and they've got two from, um, well, one from set piece and one from a penalty. So sundowns are really struggling and there's an issue there, you know. And if TS Galaxy are able to institute this defensive block with a bank of four and five, I think they can get a point here against Sundowns and then look to catch them on the break with the speed of Mbata and the speed of Nyama as well. And then in, um, in set-piece situations with uh, the delivery of a Sedat, um, look then to catch them um, with Matupu going into the box with uh, Makiten and Masangu with the height that they offer in the box, you know. But I think it's going to be actually a very difficult encounter for Sundowns. It's going to be very difficult for them to break down TS Galaxy, especially because of how Sundowns have been struggling and how pragmatic Owen Dagama can be and how he can set up. So he is a coach that can set up very well for ball-playing sides, you know. And this is more or less the shape that you're going to see, you know. And that's why I think players like Mayema could be... Many players like Mayam and Kutumela could be very instrumental whenever, either if they do start or coming off the bench and how they impact the game because these are the type of games that require um, their skill set with regards to trying to break down um, this back four and such a pragmatic side that's set up in this manner. So when I then have a look at who will be the key players in this game, um, I think in this game, Temba Zwane, 
I'll start with Temba Zwane because, like I mentioned, I think TS Galaxy will set up in a very pragmatic way. So Temba Zwane coming from deep, looking to institute creative play for this sundown side, I think is going to be very important. And uh, how he looks to get sundowns going, he's going to be very, very important for this Mamelodi sundown side. And then when we look at TS Galaxy, a player that I think is going to be very important is Man Mankupu. And I say that it's going to be very important because I think he's going to get one or two chances. And he has to be very clinical when he gets those chances for TS Galaxy, you know. So at times, this Mamelodi Sundowns defense, as much as they're very solid, but at times you can catch them off guard. But you have to be very clinical because we have seen them make mistakes from defensive perspective. So Matkupu will be very important. Can he make use of the chances that he gets? The very few chances or one chance that he gets. So, with this encounter then, I see this encounter ending as a 1-1 draw. Unfortunately, I do not foresee a winner. I don't think Sundowns will be able to successfully break down this TS Galaxy side by virtue of how pragmatic they are and how uh, defensively and tactically solid they've become as a unit, you know, especially with their bank of four and five. So... Moving on then to the next encounter, which is Supersport versus Swallows. So this is going to be a very, very interesting encounter, you know, where we're looking at um, two teams which institute different styles of play and um, two teams which started off in the DSTV Premiership very well. Uh, Supersport have started very well. Swallows did start well, but... Um, they lost to Pirates 1-0 in the previous encounter. But very interesting encounter, you know, because I just think when you look at both sides, the types of players they have, it could be a mouth-watering encounter with regards to this one. So when we then have a look at um, Supersport versus Swallows. So with regards to Supersport, they normally line up in uh, a 4-4-2. But as of late, Reynans has come in. With Reynans coming in, Reynans has then played off um, the right-hand side, or he can play off the left. Uh, he then swaps with Weber. Mbule has played as a 10, which then, is, um, which then is very important and paramount for a super sports side for it to do well. So looking at this encounter then, and um, looking at super sports. So in goals, Ronan Williams starts. And um, the back four, then, I must note that um, there has been the international break. So I think it must have been a great time to integrate um, a Bootham Kwanazi. So I do foresee Bootham Kwanazi coming in alongside Luke Fleurs. At right back, could be Ntlapo or Keenan Phillips. I'll go with Keenan Phillips. But most likely Ntlapo if we're going with consistency purposes. Or Nisma Pasera starts as the left back. And then the two in the midfield, they will start with Mukwena and uh, Don. Don has done very well, you know. He's doing really well and uh, he's growing in confidence within that defensive um, midfield role for Supersport. And he's allowing Mukwena to venture forward to join Bule and Krobla whenever they do look to go forward and attack. And then off the right-hand side, uh, Jamie Weber off the left, Reynans who can start on the right as well. I think there's more balance when Super Sports starts with a 4-2-3-1 as opposed to a 4-4-2 because it also allows Bule to come in and play as a 10. Bule as a 10 and then Krobla as the main man up front. So this is what we're looking at from a Super Sport United perspective. This is what they will most likely line up as. And um, at times it will transition and can become a 4-4-2, you know, Bule can join, or Bule goes to the left, Renans goes up front, you know. So at times it can change. But special mention to Osmanopoulos, who is a player I think should be in this lineup, you know. I really think he should be in this lineup, you know, with regards to what he does. And um, when you look at his skill set from a qualitative and a technical perspective, also another player to mention, Lungu, who's got so much speed, you know, going forward. But let's have a look at Swallows then. So Swallows, we do know that they start with their 4-3-3 in goals. The last time they started with Chabalala. Could be Chabalala or could be Freeze in goals. And then uh, a back four of Mere, uh, two centre-halves, Said, Sbisi, and at left back, um, 
Sassman. So with regards to their defense, I don't see Swallows changing too much because I think they've performed well from a defensive perspective. Unfortunate to lose against Pirates, but yeah. So I think they don't change with regards to how um, their back four has performed, especially when you consider the partnership that Sight and Sibia are forming in the heart of defense for Swallows. And then in midfield, you've got Nyatama, you've got Mukwena, and you've got Matlo. However, I just feel like there needs to be a change in that midfield for Swallows. Either Magaman or Tibedi to come in. Just to have that penetration from a midfield perspective whenever we do go into the final third, I think that's what they're really lacking. And that's what they really need, Swallows. You know, they need a midfielder who's going to be able to also create those chances. You know, they need that guy, you know. Because in Nyatama, they've got the, 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 the sort of the deep laying playmaker who sits in front of the back four, can also protect them. They've got Mukwena, you know, who goes sort of as a box-to-box, -box, who also has a bit of that creativity. And then Mako, the third midfielder, I'm sorry, just has to be a creative player, you know. You know, whereas Mako also goes box-to-box, -box, also very defensive at times. So I think they're lacking from that perspective. And then when we have a look, Solomons, Hamaldin, and then Saleng. But I think they need to start with Solomons and Mahalwa. And the reason why I say so is because of how penetrative they are when it comes to 1v1 and when it comes to the final third, you know. These are two players who can make a huge difference in the final third, you know. So those are the two players that I would go with. And then Hamal Dean up front. So with regards to this one, Solos will have... Um, the lion's share of ball possession, and uh, they will be looking to impose themselves on this Super Sport United side. And it's going to be very interesting to see then how do Super Sport United respond whenever they don't have the ball. And uh, it looks like they will be the ones to have to catch them on the counter then, you know, because Solos are a ball playing side and they will keep a um, um, large percentage of the ball. And then when you have a look at Super Sport, then Whenever they do get onto the ball, important that they take care of it and that they nurture the ball and um, they look to be um, they look to be precise in their passing. Because if they've got loose passes on the day, the solo side will punish them. Solos can look to hit you on the counter, and they can also keep um, the ball very well. You know, so with Super Sport, very important with when they are in possession of the ball and how they look to impose themselves, you know. And um, when we have then a look at the key players for this encounter, you know. So I think um, in the heart of midfield, Mukwe and, and Mbule will be very instrumental, especially considering um, how they look to impose themselves, you know, because of Swallows going with the midfield three. And um, with Swallows, if you can win the midfield battle, then you can most likely win the game. So Mbule, uh, I mean, Mukwena and Mbule will be very instrumental when it comes to um, this encounter, especially Mbule when it comes to creating those chances and also looking to get goals for himself because um, he is a player who's got an eye for goal. He's a player who has also scored, um, who scored a goal against Golden Arrows, who made a beautiful run into the box where Bradley Krobler peeled off, played a beautiful ball in there, Mbule scored. So they will be then key. And then when we have a look at Swallows, I think the wingers will be very important because when you look at um, Super Sport, in the fullback area. I think that's an area where you can really get at super sport. So when you look at Solomons and Saleng or Mahalwa, I think they're going to be very instrumental when it comes into this game and uh, how they look then to expose those fullbacks and uh, look to create chances for Rose Khamaldin. But then, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Liolo. However, I have not given you my prediction for how um, Super Sport versus Swallows will play out. So my prediction then is uh, Swallows will win this game 1-0. I foresee them winning. It's going to be a close encounter. And um, yeah, this is actually a mouth-watering encounter, one that I'm looking forward to and seeing how do both teams look to impose themselves off the bench, you know, from a Swallows perspective. Um, how do they look to integrate players like Magaman, uh, Tibedi, Mahalwa, 
um, Malinga is another one, for example. Mwape Musonda is another one who was ill the past game. But if he manages to get his health um, back in check, then he could look to impose himself on this game. Uh, from a Supersport United perspective, Gabuza coming off the bench, Ozunapolis coming off the bench. How do they look to impact this game for Supersport United? So... I think Solos will walk away with this one, 1-0. One I think they'll bounce back and gain three points. So, very, very interesting weekend coming up ahead when it comes to the DSTV Premiership. Do let me know how the fixtures will play out with regards to all the tactical previews I've done for all the matches coming up this weekend. Thank you very much for always tuning in to Disky Talk with Luyolo and supporting us. Thank you for tuning in to yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Luyolo. Signing out.